Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my Tribeca cover today. I'm talking with the producers of To My Father, uh, Sean and John, John Popola and Sean, uh, I'm sorry, Shia Violin. Come on. Shia you got Shia it. Violin? Skiavolin. Skiavolin. Okay. Skiavolin. Uh, Skiavolin. I, I am horrible with names. I Like, I will meet some, uh, like, not even just the pronunciation of it. But like I will meet somebody twenty times, and I still won't get their name right. Oh yeah, yeah, I got that. But that uh, mine's it's a tricky name. My my name is a tricky one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, thank you both for joining me uh, today. Um, and yeah, um, so for those who don't know what to my father is, um, if you remember the film Coda from Gosh, has it been two years since that movie came out? The end of, yeah, yeah, early last year or two years. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it, it it won the Oscar in 2022. So yeah, that, it, it came out in 2021. That's right. Wow. It, that feels like yesterday, but also so long ago. Um, We're in post-COVID time where every minute hap happens at a random duration. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. people in content, it's like, I'm having people come up to me like, Hey, you didn't you say you worked with that guy that was in the film Coda? I saw it yesterday and it was like blew my mind. It was incredible. So right. yeah. still happening. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it at I actually saw it, I want to say three times. Um, I think once at Sundance and then twice on Apple TV Plus. Uh, but um this the To My Father is the docu-short that's talking about kind of Troy Kotzer's uh, life, his father, and it just, I, I would describe this as the bio short, if that's even a category that exists. Um, We're inventing it. It's it's a new thing. It, yeah, a bio <laughs> short. Because, I mean, if you can have biopic, why not bio short? Yeah. Um, yeah. And for, tho for those who are heading to New York, it's uh, playing June 8th and June 9th at AMC 19th Street. Oh, also June 17th at 19, uh, AMC 19th Street. I think they've Street. added a fourth screening because um, it's, I think we've sold out. Yeah. Uh, Might be still three. tickets available though. So if you're watching, uh, don't let the sold out sign detract you from trying to get in. <laughs> yeah, those three are rush tickets, it looks like from the Tribeca website. And then June 14th uh, is in, at the Angelica. Um, and then if you can't make it to New York, it's also playing on Tribeca at home, June 19th through July 2nd. Um, so um, if you can't make it, cool. But if you can, uh, take a lot of photos. Uh, no. Uh, but yeah, um, again, thank you so much for joining me. It's, it's, I, it, 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 it's, I, I, I can't, um, I can't believe something like this was made I, I mean i i i kind of get like the need to oh hey uh he won an oscar out, out of like and i watched the oscars as it was happening um uh and it was just this weird moment of like awards momentum but even still i can't kind of believe this journey uh that troy went on um I mean, he he won the Spirit Award and the Oscar, which is kind of unheard of. The, I mean, could you imagine a world where Adam Sandler got the Oscar and the Spirit Award for Uncut Gems? That would be heaven on earth. But um, but uh, jokes aside, um, I want to talk about um, some of the more artistic choices. There's um, there's this kind of faded memory kind of thing that's going on uh, behind Troy as he's talking, um, where you know it'll show clips of I believe um, uh, Tom and Jerry. Uh, it also uh, intersperses uh, clips of other things from his life uh, to kind of connect these um, the performed bits of it and the interviews. So. Um, Really quick, um, what I guess what inspired that um, uh, that decision? Yeah, well, um, so this is our our first um, film that 
we've made for a deaf audience, right? And um, and so we were learning a lot of, we're having to, to rethink all, all of our different methods of, uh, of, of storytelling uh, for film. And, and one of them is a realization that, you know, we've got a narrator here who, who speaks with his hands and we have to have his hands up the whole time, right? Typically, typically, like, I'll cover up the narrator but, like the whole time or interviews and stuff. Try to get get more of a uh, uh, emotional attachment and to the visuals, aesthetic, inner, you know, aesthetic narrative to it. Um, but but we couldn't do that for this, and it just we, we just had this opportunity to um, you know I've kind of done done some things like this before, um, and. So we, we just uh, decided to, to come up with these tonal elements uh, to look like, as if it was to, to project behind him. And um, yeah, and it, you know, hopefully it, it worked well. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, I, you know, this was a vision that Sean had as a director from the start as we, you know, we conducted this interview um, last summer with Troy on the stage and it was really framed for this. And um, and then it was such an interesting thing because we were also balancing uh, doing this, you know, pretty heavy duty compositing throughout the film while trying to preserve an essentially cinematic and organic look. So we didn't want it to feel like a bunch of motion graphics. We wanted it to st stay in the world of the real, in the world of the of the possible through a camera lens. And so that was the other balancing act that you know. We worked on together quite a bit with our with our uh, compositor and 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 art director Brian, who did a tremendous job of I think making those projections feel like a projection instead of like a graphic effect. Like that was what we were definitely going for. Yeah, and then you've got some impeccable sound design, and which is actually a trend I'm noticing. Um, this year, uh, I talked yesterday with um, the director, Olivia West, I believe, uh, Olivia West Lloyd uh, from Somewhere Quiet, uh, which I hi highly recommend um, just if you like sound, um, I think it's it's one to watch because there's like a moment where like the husband's scratching his beard and it, you can just hear every like motion of it. But um in um in the context of this film um i thought it was a great decision for the soundtrack to kind of be minimal talking about you know making for a deaf audience um because it makes you focus on what's happening on the docu short rather than and what's being said rather than oh hey i'm just watching a docu short if that makes does that make sense or or do i need more coffee <laughs> <laughs> We all um, need more coffee. Yes, <laughs> always. <Great. laughs> well, I'll, right. I'll I'll start that uh, that um, our the sound design. I'm personally really proud of the sound design insofar as I can take no credit for it, but Jesse Bennett, who did con who produced the sound design, who's as as sound sound engineer, design and mix. Um, this is in some ways her most um. She's an associate producer here at Emergent Order Foundation. And this, this was a big step up in complexity for her. And she just hit it so far out of the park. Um, you, you know, this is, I'd say, I feel like this is a, kind, a level of sound design that, you know, you would typically get out of an incredibly high-end audio post experience. Um, I don't want to say Skywalker Ranch, but I came out of television. I worked in a lot of big, big studios for sound mixes for commercials. And so, and Jesse, you know, in, in some ways is a self-taught audio engineer and she just did an, a beautiful job. And then I think Sean direction a, 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 in terms of what should be in that, because he built a soundscape as a director to parallel the visual scape that is part of what makes it such a, it, it creates a world in the absence of voice because there's very little voice in the film. Yeah, yeah. Interestingly, I think the sound, right, because we're making this for uh, the hearing audience too, right? Interestingly, the sound helps you enter into 
their life, the like the silent world of um of of, of the deaf community, right? Uh, which is kind of a weird thing, um, but 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 you know we rely so much on on hearing. I I think that um, it's just the amount of information that we get from from hearing. Um, so you can kind of tweak that and play with that um, to help um, somebody enter into to, into that world. Um, that I have to say, like I watched that film, uh, The Sound of Metal, and and they just really that was just an amazing film. And so that was sort of like I'm like, hey Jesse, we gotta like we gotta get close to to this because they just set the bar, and it's like incredible. And she really, yeah, like like John said, I'm super proud of Jesse's work. Yeah, great, um, great uh, recommendation for Sound of Metal. I saw that at AFI Fest 2020. Oh, times a blur. Um, and then uh, I think Riz Ahmed also made like another one where it's like Mogul Mowgli or something like that. Um, that was a similar tone, but yeah, that sounded. That sound design is incredible, especially when uh, Ruben, I, I feel like we could spoil a three-year-old movie, um, when yeah. you get to hear what Ruben hears. And I think you have, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the last week's been kind of a blur, um, but I think you have a similar moment in this where you kind of hear a little bit of what Troy hears. Yeah, so we're taking liberties there to to help people understand that that um you know this is troy just as troy's character now right and so we got to have moments where where we peak the imagination of the hearing audience um to enter deep enter into his experience a little better and we use this um we use the sound that um inspired by sound of metal where you know their sound en engineer their recordist they this crazy guy like he was recording like in like with mics like inside of the body and stuff and so so we're listening to that stuff and um and and you know that that was that was the inspiration yeah i think i i, I may have talked to the sound editor post oscar win uh, about that where um no it was the film editor uh for sound of metal uh that won the oscar um, but yeah, super uh, interesting decision there. Um, and then, you know, I there's as much as this is about Troy, it's also about his relationship to his father. And you know, how did you approach trying to balance those two aspect of aspects of his of the documentary? Uh, the what did I call it? Bio short. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, go for it, Sean. Well, I mean, from from our perspective, it's all about his father, um, and you know that's what Troy did when he when he received his award. It was like the dedication to his dad, and he opened the doors to the story. And it's like, oh my God, this is a, like, uh, who is this guy, and what what is Troy's story? Right? He said. He said he was his hero, and he said that um, he was the best signer, right? It was a hearing family, and that he got in, tragically hit by a um, a drunk driver, right? And then he was paralyzed from the neck down, um, and so he couldn't sign to him anymore. The, the, that relationship um, w was, right, that... That's what this story is about: is the relationship of his dad and him, and from from the point where uh, he was born and they realized that he was deaf, uh, to the point of the Oscars, right? And and clearly, um, it's it's there. There was something beautiful there that we had to explore, right? Um, dad saves America is is the project um, that John. Uh, started and and so when when like I didn't watch the Oscars but but our uh, CMO Mac came in uh, the next morning and he's like man did you see that and I was like 
I, I just saw like the Will Smith episode. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, is that what you're talking? No, no, no. Troy Kotzer, you know, dedicated the Oscar to his dad. And so, um, so yeah, um, that's how we approached it. Yeah. Uh, like just delving in. I mean, there's a lot of personal um, connection to this story from everyone that's worked on it. So, you know, my dad uh, was rear-ended by a drunk driver and it had a, it transformed his life. It didn't paralyze him, but it did hurt him in a way where he could, he, he, he's a surgeon and he couldn't continue to practice medicine. So it had a dramatic effect. Um, uh, one of our members of the team um, actually has a father who was, is, is paralyzed from the neck down like Troy's dad. And then um, when, when our assistant editor, Julia, um, learned sign language in college and so Troy was this sort of rock star for her so there I feel like there was so many stars that aligned to bring this team together around this story that um it, it felt like we had to tell it we and we had to shine a light on the role one of the things that we do with our show Dad Saves America that Troy appeared on you know as part of the early parts of the process is is try to draw attention to the role we play as fathers in modeling how to overcome the challenges we face in life. And that is what Troy's dad does in the movie to such impactful effect for Troy. You know, Troy is born deaf. He's born into a world that is fundamentally going to feel alien to him. Um, you know, he's always basically like a, an immigrant in a sense to the world of the hearing. And, uh, and there's a lot of ways you can take that kind of experience individually, and you, it can be very difficult and debilitating, or the or you can take it the way Troy's dad modeled him in his own life. You can say, you have potential, you have dignity, you can you can listen to your spark and go for it. And and then the thing that's so powerful about what happens when after his accident is that he doesn't re retrench. He stays engaged in the community. He be, he stays um, someone who believes in life and the power of life. And so that lesson in in Troy's dad, I think, is is so powerful for everyone because we all face tragedies in one way or another. I mean, you know, we're all going to eventually lose our parents, and it's so powerful and so painful. And so I think that's what makes this such an important story to tell. Yeah. Yeah, Troy. One thing that Troy mentioned after one of the the screenings, he was uh, he was like, "This this this film is super important for everybody, right? Because it can help people come to overcome their challenges." There's a lot of people that really need need to see stories um, where they are persistent and pursuing, and, and they they have they have a faith that carries them um through and and so like in his case right this is this beautiful epitome of of this of, of how a dad can uh you know just really devote himself and give everything so that so that his his son uh can thrive in the hearing world yeah and you know you talk about it being far-reaching um funnily enough the last note i wrote while watching the movie was you know i I think it's going to be the hit of, of the short lineup um, because it, it's so far reaching where, you know, you could go into where people can connect to the story of your dad being the most important thing in the world. Um, you, you could, uh, or through you, you could view it through the lens of Troy's experiences, or you could view it through really any way i viewed it through my experiences with my dad um um and i'll, I'll tell you what i'm not going to give away well i i is the giving away something that if it already if it's like a biography um <laughs> i don't one know one of the challenges but, one of the challenges when you try to make a trailer for a film that's 20 minutes is if you want the trailer to be any good, any good, you spoil the whole movie in terms of plot points. So I think the beautiful, the reason to watch this film is because the experience of it takes you on a journey 
even though if you've seen anything about Troy's story, you know where it ends up, and we don't hide that. And that was a, that was story storytelling conversations we had from the beginning. Like, how do we introduce Troy's win? Do we start right there? Do we save it? Is it in a world where people can Google and will probably find this on ultimately in in some kind of news story or web feed? that already gives it away. Like, you know, these are the weird things from a storytelling perspective that the digital world breaks for us, you know, mm -hmm. we're now encouraged to sort of put the best part first. <laughs> so it's an, it, that, that these are, uh, there's no spoiling to be had here. Yeah, so I was just gonna say um, that when Troy's dad dies, that was particularly affecting to me because I lost my dad, um, let's see, 2016. So it's been six, seven years this month. Um, Hear that. Uh, yeah, it was, it's still tough um, because um, I'm the one who found him and everything like that. And yeah, yeah. Um, he died due to complications with MS, um, multiple sclerosis. And so, as you can probably imagine, uh, when uh, Troy gets in his car, I was already a, an emotional mess by that point. I'm like, all right, I, I see what you're doing, and I, I, I I'm, I'm just gonna let the emotions out. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, it, 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 it's a particularly affecting in that way. Um, but yeah, I think, I think people should go see it. Um, you know, you could see it at home, uh, June nineteenth through July second via Tribeca at home. I'm not sure what the cost is, so don't quote me on this. Um, and then if you're in New York, uh, June eighth, June ninth, June fourteenth, and June seventeenth. Um, I think those times are eight fifteen on the eighth, two thirty on the ninth, six o'clock on the fourteenth, and three thirty p.m. on the seventeenth. Awesome. Austin, thanks for sharing that story about your dad. That was awesome. Well, yeah, just yeah. thank you so much for, you know, making t time out of, we're less than a week uh, from Tribeca now. So um, the sweats are, I just imagine the sweats are starting to happen. I know they're <laughs> happening with me. So <laughs> the bad sleep, the bad sleep started a couple of days ago. So that's, oh yeah, that, that happened last week, but yeah, but th <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks for having us on, Austin. Thanks for sharing that vulnerable moment with us. And that's what this movie is all about, is how to connect with those people in our lives that um, we love and that change us for the better and uh, and um, celebrate them and honor them. Yeah, and I think that's the actual perfect note to leave that on. That's If, if you didn't write that, uh, congratulations. <laughs> awesome yeah thank right. you so much austin yeah thank Good you to meet thank you, you both bye-bye yeah. bye-bye